we are being asked to prove by contradiction that there are no positive integers p and q such that 4p squared minus q squared is equal to 25. So we first think proof by contradiction. What is proof by contradiction? What does this mean? So there is three steps that you kind of generally have to follow when you're solving a question like this, and I've listed them here. So you first want to assume that the first statement is false. So in our case, we will assume that there are positive integers p and q such that, etc. We'll come back and write that down in a second. Then our second step is then through logical steps arrive at a conclusion. And then finally, we can then from that conclusion deduce that the original statement must be true. So what are we going to say here? So like I briefly mentioned a second ago, we're going to say, let's assume that there are positive integers, p and q. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to highlight the word r because this is key, because this is what changes from when we have our statement that they give us, there are no positive integers, and we now have that there are positive integers, p and q. And then we're going to say such that 4p squared minus q squared is equal to 25. So what we're going to do is we're going to work with this expression here and try and solve it. So we'll just copy that down. We have 4p squared minus q squared, and that's equal to 25. So we can see here we have two terms which are squares. So then if we do the difference of two squares, this is going to leave us with 2p plus q in one bracket and then 2p minus q in the other bracket. And this is still equal to 25. So just to double check, we know that if we multiply out these brackets, we'll get back to this here. So that's all good. So we now need to think, what do we do next? So we know that if this is going to be true, then we can look at the factors of 25 and then we know that these brackets are each going to equal one of the factors. So therefore, if we take 25, we'll just write it down here, what can we multiply together to get to 25? And this is going to be integers only. So we know that we have 1 multiplied by 25 is going to be equal to 25. And then the next thing we have, we're not going to have 2, 3 doesn't go to 25, nor does 4. So we have that 5 times 5 is going to be equal to 25. So therefore, our factors of 5 are going to be 1 and 25. And we also have 5 and 5. So that's our factors. So what we're going to do now, so we're going to say, therefore, if what we've said is true so if true then we know that 2p plus q and we're going to take a look at the fives first because we know that we don't need to do it twice because we have five and five so we know that either way 2p plus q is going to equal five and then also 2p minus q is going to equal five so therefore what we're going to do is we're going to now solve for p and q and we have here two equations both the two variables p and q and we can solve for these using simultaneous equations so then we can rearrange this and we can say that q is going to be equal to well our five stays there and we subtract 2p and then likewise we're going to have on this side we're going to solve for q we're going to have that q is going to be equal to well we add q to both sides and subtract 5 from both sides so that's going to be 2p minus 5 and then what we do now is we equate these so therefore we have that 5 minus 2p is going to be equal to 2p minus 5. So then rearranging this, we have that we're going to add 2p to both sides, and we're going to add 5 to both sides. So this is going to leave with the fact that 4p is going to be equal to 10, and therefore we divide both sides by 4, and we have that p is going to be equal to, we can put this into our calculator to get in decimal form, p is going to be equal to 2.5, Therefore, we can use our value of p in this equation here to work out the value of q. So therefore, I have that q is going to be equal to 2 multiplied by 2.5, and then we're going to subtract 5. So we know that 2 multiplied by 2.5 is 5, 5 minus 5 is 0. So therefore, q is equal to 0. So then we can just note here that p equals 2.5 is not an integer. And remember, in our proof, we've assumed that there are positive integers p and q, such that this is true. So you look at our first option, we can see that this is not going to be 
true so far because p is not an integer. So then moving into our next option, so we need to include the term or. So now we have or, if true, then we'll have that 2p plus q is going to be equal to, well, we're going to be looking at our 1 in 25 factors. So we'll begin with 2p plus q is equal to 25. And then this would mean that 2p minus q is equal to 1. So therefore, rearranging these in the same way, we have that q is equal to 25 minus 2p. And likewise, we have that q is equal to 2p minus 1. So therefore, equating these, we have that 25 minus 2p is going to be equal to 2p minus 1. Therefore, rearranging these, we'll have that 4p is equal to 26. So therefore, we put this into a calculator, 26 over 4, and we know that this gives us that p is going to be equal to 6.5. So again, this is not an integer. And we can then say that q is going to be equal to 2 lots of p, so 2 lots of 6.5 minus 1. What's that going to be? That's going to be 2 lots of 6.5, that's 13. We subtract 1, that is equal to 12. So therefore, we can see, again, this is not going to be an integer. So then we can also say, so or if true, then we have, so this time we're going to have it the other way around. So when 2p plus q is equal to 1 and 2p minus q is equal to 25. So we'll have 2p plus q is equal to 1 and 2p minus q is equal to 25. So what's this going to mean? So we'll do exactly the same method again. So we'll have q is going to be equal to 1 minus 2p. And we'll have that q is equal to 2p minus 25. So then what we're going to do is we're going to do exactly the same and we're going to equate these. So we'll have that 1 minus 2p is going to be equal to 2p minus 25. This actually works out the same as last time. And we have that p is equal to 6.5. Then the only difference here is we're then going to work out q. So we have that q is equal to 1 minus 2 lots of p, which is 6.5. And this time, if we put this into a calculator, this comes out as 1 minus 13, which is negative 12. But we can say here that this is, this is not going to be valid because a, this is not an integer, and b, q is not positive. Because remember in the question, we're told that P and Q are positive. So Q is not positive. So therefore, all that we had to say was that this, this one, this solution doesn't occur because P and Q aren't positive. But what we've shown is that there are no solutions that are integers. So we have P is equal to 2.5, P is equal to 6.5, and, and P is equal to 6.5. So really, this isn't possible. So we've reached a contradiction. So therefore, we can say that this is a contradiction as there are no integer solutions. Hence, there are no positive integers p and q such that 4p squared minus q squared is equal to 25. So therefore, taking a look back at this question, we see that it was worth four marks. So we receive our first mark for setting up the contradiction and factorizing and getting to the stage where we had the 2p plus q multiplied by 2p minus q was equal to 25. So that's where we receive our first mark just there. And we then receive our second mark for getting to the, the first kind of if true statement. So at this stage here, when we said that if true, then 2p plus q is equal to 5 and 2p minus q is equal to 5. So we receive our second mark just about there. We then receive our third mark for uh, getting to the first point where we had solutions. So that was either when we had the p equals six and a half and q equals 12, or in our case, you get it for doing your first mark. So that was when we had here, the p was equal to two and a half and q was equal to zero. We then receive our fourth and final mark for our kind of concluding statement when we said that this is a contradiction as there are no integer solutions and hence there are no positive integers p and q such that four p squared minus q squared is equal to 25. So we'll just put our fourth and final mark for this question in here. And therefore, we've completed this question.